Welcome back. It's day 208 of Growing Lemon Trees from Seeds. This episode spans 46 days, starting from nearly 7 months in, all the way to past 8 months in. As you can see, many of these leaves have water spots. It's unsightly up close, but most of this stuff is harmless. It's just residue left over from tap water. And I did use a lot of tap water to wash my leaves of all my plants to get rid of all that sugar residue from my sugar experiment a while ago. And this second mover is always behind in many respects. And you can see there's a very interesting leaf that has one edge that's uh, bent down maybe 70 or 80 degrees. And this thing looked like it was going to branch out, but it never did. And some of those uh, lower original leaves that are tiny now, they're all dusty and dirty because every time I flood water this all the way to the rim, all the organic detritus and clay mud gets all over it. So I do try to spray these things with distilled water every once in a while, but I'm sure the volume is nowhere near enough to get these things clean. And if I do so, they'll just get dirty very quickly again. So I've been continuing my vitamin crushed powder and small scoop of miracle grow once a week regimen and I've just been using tap water once upon a time and many years in the past I would just use distilled water but the production I can get from my distiller per day is about a gallon realistically maybe two gallons if I'm super diligent and care enough but it takes a long time to produce distilled water and it's really not necessary it's just for aesthetics really so on day 215 you can see the mud has a nice color there um, one thing about this pot is it's one of those 75 percent sand 25 percent clay soil mixtures and since you don't know what the exact concentration of clay is unless you do some kind of settling test in a jar and do all these measurements which um, i haven't tried doing i might do that someday but this is one of those pots that just got a lot of extra clay soil so it has that very muddy uh, red appearance on the top and not all the pots look like this even though there are many other pots such as the avocado um, it's coming along really nicely and that's just sort of um, it's very sandy at the top even though it's supposedly the same 75% clay sand, 25% uh, clay soil mixture. So two pots with the same formulations, but the clay soil was taken from different areas in the same hill range. It's not really a mountain range uh, near where I used to live. And that was in North County, San Diego. And depending on where you get your soil from and um, yeah, whether you filter it or not, the composition can vary greatly in how much sand, silt, and clay is in there. So um, this thing's coming along nicely. The new leaves are lighter in color, of course, and they're all very waxy. I'd rate these leaves as being pretty tough. Um, generally, I think the thicker and waxier a leaf is, the more resistant it is to damage. And um, yeah, it's just... Uh, I keep doing what I'm doing because it's working so I do this basically every Saturday this fertilization regime although I think in the long term there can be some buildup of fertilizer and solids from the vitamin obviously in the soil so I might have to do a tap water flush every once in a while um, maybe several flushes a gallons worth to just wash things out of there so on day 218 you can notice that there's finally some sunlight striking this my balcony plants haven't gotten direct sunlight for this entire time since i moved in mid-april 2020 and on day 222 you can see uh, the sun lasts for a few hours and it greatly increases the aesthetics of the videography and um, this really reminds me of the old days when I lived in the previous apartments and uh, I got at least a few hours of either morning sun or afternoon sun so the trajectory of the light coming in here is different 
and it seems maybe for at least half of the year, actually maybe only about five months out of the year, I'll know after I've experienced the entire year here, but um, the sun will eventually stay all the way until the late afternoon, I believe. Um, and lately it's been hitting about 9 a.m., I would say, on this balcony, maybe a little bit earlier. But the trajectory of the sun will change, and uh, this will be getting a lot more light, this balcony, over the coming weeks and months. So it's day 229. There was a brutal heat wave across Southern California. Um, this locale had a daily high of 102 Fahrenheit. Uh, that's about 39 Celsius. That's really high already. And I don't know what the temperature limits are for lemon trees or lemon seedlings rather, but I know all of my plants are at risk if it gets any hotter than this and it will tomorrow. And you can already see that there's some leaf curl in the runt of the litter. So that's um, a little bit worrying. At first I was worried about if the root system was underdeveloped. And you can see a little worm down there at the base of this little tree. So uh, there are little worms that hatch out and sort of make their living in the clay. And they come out when I water too much and I think they're just drowning. But anyway, I think the root system is actually not too bad off. Uh, maybe the roots have a hard time adapting to this uh, very heavy clay content. And the fact that I just flood water so generously maybe leaves the roots no incentive to develop. It's not really clear how you can stimulate like really good root growth sometimes. Um, in some of my newer pots, I'm using uh, seven parts sand for every part of filtered clay soil. So I think that should help with aeration a lot and help with plant health in general. So on day 230, it's already 103 Fahrenheit, 43 Celsius early in the day. I believe this was shot around 9 a.m. You can see my avocado drooping. And if you listen uh, to the background, I purposely turned the volume up. You can hear leaves dropping nonstop. So the high for this day was 109 Fahrenheit or over 43 Celsius. Everything except my Joshua tree was in mortal danger. And while I can water to have evaporative cooling for all my plants, uh, I can't be there all day to watch them. It's day 237. The color of the sunlight coming through the smog looks a little bit weird these days. There have been so many wildfires starting from central coast of California all the way up to Washington State I believe caused mostly by dry lightning strikes and you can see all these little yellow dots on these leaves in the middle those were caused by that heat wave seven days ago in which the daily high was anywhere from 109 Fahrenheit up to 111 I think that's a breaking point for most plants I moved my avocado indoors for two days and took it back out when it cooled down to the mere 90s or 80s. It's still very hot. In San Diego, summer is basically August and September. Those are the hottest months. It, of course, it can get a little bit hot in July as well or even June, but we do have a marine layer effect that uh, tempers all of the temperatures all the way up to August sometimes. So it's day 243. You can see a little bit of burn uh, from the old days when there was a fertilizer buildup in the soil. Those uh, little leaves are irrelevant anyway, and they'll probably drop off. And also when plants just get to a certain age, uh, all those little original leaves no longer provide any service or value. So they'll probably be shed regardless of whether there was the mildest of fertilizer burns or not. And you can see uh, lemon trees have spikes and they can be quite long. So that's very aesthetic to look at. They're not really, well, I haven't been poked by one yet, but compared to the Joshua tree, it's basically nothing. Those are innocuous decorations really. So I did another flush out recently using several gallons of tap water. Maybe not that much for this pot because it just drains so slowly compared to all the other pots. It's been like that always. 
And even though it's the same 75% sand mixture with 25% filter of clay soil, you can see how red and muddy it is on top. And that's because its clay content is obviously higher than anything in the other pots. So maybe if it were lower, say 87.5% sand or 90% sand, and the clay was just a tiny fraction, then these plants could have grown much faster and had bigger leaves and better development. You can see a little bit of bark developing at the bottom. Um, maybe these things would be further along, but they look so fragile in the beginning with such thin stem bases that I didn't want to do a transplant. I know some of you have suggested that I split these into two pots. I don't really have the luxury to do that either. So I've just kind of left these alone to enjoy the progress. So uh, please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates. Thanks for watching.